New for 1982, Group B was sensational and unhinged in nearly every way. Its brief but explosive tenure as the top tier of rallying lasted just five seasons, rivaling Formula One for popularity and searing itself as legend in the minds of gearheads decades on. One of those gearheads is Luca Betti. A professional rally driver in more modern times, Betti also turned to the past, collecting, racing, and ultimately restoring a number of the iconic Group B cars from Lancia. In the course of doing so, he learned enough about them to create this, the Chimera Automobili Evo 37. The Evo 37 draws its inspiration and much more from one of the greatest rally cars of all time. If you're not a rally fiend, however, you could be forgiven for not fully understanding what the Lancia 037 is. It is part of a legendary dynasty of world-beating Lancia rally cars spanning four different decades. When people say make Lancia great again, it's these cars that they're talking about. The 037 was a clean sheet design intended specifically for the World Rally Championship and was raced by some of the greatest drivers of all time. It's your lead now, Walter. I think three and a half minutes before Marco and nine minutes before the uh, stick. So, so you, you must be very happy with such yes, comfortable lead. Right. I am already calculating every stage I can be one minute slower than stick. Like many great competition cars, the 037 is the result of a major rule change. Group B went into effect at the start of 1982, permanently changing the landscape of European and ultimately global motorsport. It included a significant relaxation of the rules and the resulting era is widely agreed to be the wildest period of rallying ever. In the beginning, however, it was chaos. The rulemaking body, FISA, announced in 1979 that a rule change was coming in a few years, but didn't explain exactly what the rules would be, leaving manufacturers in the dark about what they would need to build. Fiat Group's competition team, led by Sergio Limone and Cesare Fiorio, took the gamble anyway, starting the development of a new car to contest rallies for a set of rules that had not yet been written. While they didn't have the rules yet, they did have a bit of experience building rally cars. It began in the 1960s with the Flavia, and really got going with its little brother, the front-wheel drive V4-powered Fulvia, which was a dominant force in Italian, European, and world rally events from the mid-60s until the early 70s. It was eventually outclassed by the rear-engined Renault Alpine A110, and Lancia responded by building an all-new dedicated rally car with a mid-mounted engine, the iconic Stratos. It was difficult to drive, but wildly successful. Its brilliant career cut somewhat short by parent company Fiat's desire to rally with a car that more closely resembled something the masses could buy in order to help the sales of regular cars. This meant the creation of the Fiat 131 Abart, which was also immensely successful, winning the World Rally Championship three times. With the end of the 131's production run, Fiat Group were open to a new rally car, and so for the upcoming Group B, Limone's team eventually settled on the concept of the 037, the central tub of the Beta Monte Carlo, with completely new tubular subframes mounted to both front and rear bulkheads. This would allow all new suspension with geometry to suit competition use, and also saw the engine rotated from transverse to longitudinal to provide space for the long double wishbones ideal for the kind of suspension travel necessary for rallying. To reduce technical risk and shorten development time, the engine would be a supercharged version of the Fiat Group's excellent twin cam inline 4 designed by Aurelio Lampredi, which was used in naturally aspirated form in the 131 Abarth and a great many other Fiat Group products thanks to its inherent brilliance. For the same reason, the car would be rear-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive. Visa's late announcement of the rules meant a compressed development schedule, and the target was to get something reliable out the door in time to be racing for the first ever Group B races at the start of the 1982 season. Lancia managed to do this, and the car was promising, but its all-new gearbox gave some teething troubles that prevented the 037 from consistently delivering strong results in 1982. 1983 went considerably better, starting with Walter Rohl's famous and improbable overall win at Monte Carlo in January. ...and the third of his career. Lancia for the World Championship? Well, the Italian team is certainly looking very impressive. The remainder of the season was similar, and by the end of the year, Lancia edged out Audi by a slim two-point margin to win the manufacturer's championship. And he could yet still go on to win the world driver's championship. One of the secrets of the 037 success was that it wasn't diabolical to drive like the Stratos. Walter Rohl said in his later years, The car I loved most was the 037. It was the one that suited my style the most, the most precise and sincere. You could go 110% because it was perfect. For this reason, with a two-wheel drive car, we managed to win the World Rally Championship against four-wheel drive cars. 
The 037 sensational 1983 season assured its status as a legend, but the writing was on the wall. For 1984, Audi's Quattros became more reliable and well-rounded in the broad range of conditions encountered in rallies around the world, and it was clear that four-wheel drive would be the way for the future. The successor of the 037, the Delta S4, used the same basic architecture but added four-wheel drive. It also added a turbocharger to the already supercharged engine, creating a twin-charged power unit with good oomph down low and plenty of top end as well. Where the 037s raced with about 300 horsepower, Delta S4s and other late Group B cars raced with 500 or 600 horsepower, creating monstrously fast cars that ultimately proved so dangerous that a series of serious and sometimes even lethal accidents saw the termination of Group B before the 1986 season was even finished. The legacy, though, is a series of sensational cars which are revered today, particularly so by Chimera Automobili. Chimera Motorsport began by campaigning race cars for its founder, professional rally driver Luca Betti, who competed for 15 years in Italian and European rally championships. Betti is also wildly enthusiastic about the 037 and the Delta S4, and Chimera gained considerable experience restoring and preparing these vintage rally launches eventually developing an understanding of these cars so intimate that they had the unique expertise to create what became the Evo 37. So what is the Evo 37? In essence, it is a fully modernized 037 that maintains the ethos of the original car but is produced to a much higher standard. It is made in the same way that the original 037 was. A Beta Monte Carlo center section receives new front and rear subframes with bespoke motorsport-grade suspension, brakes, wheels, and tires. The engine is a modernized version of the Lampredi twin cam engine displacing 2150 cc's, with significant participation by some of the original engineers and technicians who built the original 037s, effectively picking up where they left off in the 1980s. Chimera began with a 037 Group B engine, disassembled and 3D scanned it, and then recast the block and head and remanufactured the other internals, all in modern high strength materials. Engine management is a modern, fully electronic system, and like the original 037, it uses a Volumex supercharger but adds the turbocharging of the Delta S4 on top of this. The supercharger electronically declutches at high RPM as it loses efficiency, eliminating the drag it generates just as the turbocharger takes over. Power is transmitted to the rear wheels only via a six-speed transaxle made by Dana Graziano and is the same unit that was used in the Audi R8 and Lamborghini Gallardo. Suspension is via Olin's coilovers, brakes are by Brembo, and each mechanical system was comprehensively re-engineered to take advantage of the significant technical progress of the last 40 years. Perhaps one of the most striking differences between the Evo 37 and the original is how nicely finished it is. The original 037, even the homologated road car version, or Stradale, was a fairly crude device built with nearly single-minded focus on racing. The Camara, on the other hand, is a piece of art with virtually endless configurability in terms of finishes, not just of the wheels paint and upholstery, but even the chassis and suspension elements. The car has a standard of detailing and finish that will captivate the most jaded car enthusiast for hours before so much as even starting the engine. Once that enthusiast starts the engine, however, it will be all over. Like almost every good Italian car, the engine of the Evo 37 dominates the experience, and even among the rarefied company of sensational Italian engines, this one stands out. It sounds like nothing else thanks to its combination of supercharger and turbocharger. The former produces an unearthly noise, something a bit like, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, mooing, at low RPM, while the quintessential turbocharger noises are also extremely prominent, particularly when dipping in and out of the throttle. The noise is complex, always present, and always changing. Even for the most experienced car person, it is intoxicating to play with the powertrain just to hear the sounds that it makes. The engine's primary purpose, however, is not to make noise, but to make power, and it does this with explosive overachievement. The engine has numerous maps, but produces something on the order of 500 horsepower, about like the Delta S4 race car, but does so on pump gas and with a level of tractability and refinement that makes this car viable as an admittedly very thrilling road car. 
This is more power than a Ferrari F40, and at 2,400 pounds, the Evo 37 weighs 4 or 500 pounds less, and 600 pounds less than a modern GT3, which has about the same power. The resulting performance is, well, batshit. A big part of this is the supercharger, which gives torque down low and thus incredible responsiveness, which coupled with the low weight of the car makes it accelerate with nearly incomprehensible force. Then the turbocharger joins the party and things get even more insane. The remainder of the Evo 37's dynamics are equally wild, yet also well thought out. It has a lively, responsive, and highly adjustable chassis that makes the car feel positively alive. It is more than a little bit knife-edged, having obviously been developed by and for someone who drives at a very high level and wants a sophisticated, if mildly terrifying, device to deliver on every request the driver makes, however perverse that request may be. In spite of the Evo 37's vaguely unhinged personality, it is beautifully resolved, giving incredible control and security to the driver talented enough to extract it. The entire car delivers a purity of experience that comes only from cars that have been developed by a small team of dedicated and highly competent driving enthusiasts. The fingerprints of the Chimera team are all over this car. It is a rolling representation of the personalities, values, and philosophies of the people who created it. The most magical part of the Evo 37 is how successfully it exists as both an old car and a new car at the same time. Every part of interacting with it gives the soul fizziness and thrill of an old car, yet it is so thoughtfully engineered using the best modern technology that its competence and sensation of mechanical ability blows away the fragile tentativeness that tends to come with driving old cars hard, especially Italian ones. The Evo 37 isn't for everyone. In fact, it's not for most people. It's too focused, too brutal, too wild, not to mention too expensive for the average driver. That's just as well since Chimera are only making 37 of them. But for the right enthusiast for whom their F40 isn't quite exciting enough, the Evo 37 is an intoxicating and totally incomparable hair-on-fire thrill ride that's also set your heart afire gorgeous. <laughs>